Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jacob Rubin Walker. Like, she, she just goes sing and do all that and like, now you go. So it's like, so I gotta, I gotta somehow follow that. Like, so. so in 2000, I had just gotten home from work and my mother called and I was just getting to settle in in the evening. It's unusual for her to give me a call. So I answered and I, she says, hey, Dad's in need of a kidney transplant. We want to know if you want to be a donor. Without hesitation, I say yes. This is Pops. Family. It's a done deal. So I hung up. She said, we'll call you later. What she told me, we'll call you later, get the details, and we'll move forward. Then I thought about it later, a little confused. Like, well, I didn't know Dad was doing that bad. He was that ill. And I started to reflect on it a little bit more. I didn't know what a transplant even was. Like, how did he even do this? So my dad, Sylvester Walker Sr., was born in Alabama. And he survived Jim Crow and racism of the South and made his way to Gary, Indiana, where he started to build a family. It was five of us. I was the most amazing one. We'll just leave it at that. My siblings are watching. I just, I had to take that moment. <laughs> my dad was an electrical journeyman by trade, and one of my most prized possessions is his journeyman's card, and everywhere I go, it's, it's on me. This is how he provided for his family. My dad was also a deacon in our local church, so he was a man of faith. To me, he was a superman. He was strong, he was sturdy. So Superman needed me, it wasn't no problem. My dad was also a giver. Now he wasn't gonna give you no money. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he was somebody I would describe as thoughtful with his dollars. <laughs> but he gave to his community, he gave of his talents. So I remember many a Sunday, we went to a Kojic church. Now, I was going to start on time, help us when it was going to end. <laughs> and he would be in the back while service was going on a ladder up in the rafters doing electrical work. He gave his talents. My dad also gave his talents to his community. So one of our neighbors approached him one day and said, hey, I'd like for you to install a motion light you know, above the garage in the back. No problem. My dad took care of it, didn't charge anything. He had the materials in the house. And I remember one evening in the kitchen, this light came shining, this light came shining through the kitchen window. My mom was at the sink right above the window, and this bright light came in. And it was my neighbor. She had drove up to the, to the house, went in, no problem. My mom never turned her back. My dad was sitting at the ki kitchen table behind her. And she said, here I am married to an electrician, and I don't have a motion light above my garage. So a few days later, <laughs> there was a motion light installed above 542 Matthew Street where we grew up. My dad was Superman, but he wasn't stupid either. <laughs> My dad was a hard worker. He didn't have the blueprint for fatherhood because he never really knew his dad. He thinks he met him once. He believes my dad is somewhere, his dad was somewhere in Michigan. He was a Rolling Stone and he moved here. So I might have family here, I don't know. So if I look familiar, talk to me after the show. <laughs> but he didn't have a blueprint for fatherhood. And so neither did we. So our relationship was interesting. He worked a lot. There were days my dad went to work on a Monday. I didn't see him to Thursday evening because he was working double, triple shifts. He thought the best way he could provide for us was by providing dollars, because we were poor. So he did what he had to do. But it was like living with a stranger sometimes, because I didn't really get to know him, because he was working so much. Which ultimately, he worked so much, his body started to give out on him. He acquired hypertension, high blood pressure, and ultimately diabetes, where he needed a kidney transplant. So 
So I went through the process to become a donor. This isn't for the faint of heart. Every time I went to the doctor to run a test, they took blood. These people were like vampires. They would take several vials every time. And this one nurse was so bad, she bruised my arm and it hurt for like days after. Even now when I go get a physical, I can't even sit still. Yeah. But ultimately I was found to be a suitable donor. I was the right blood type, I was in good shape. So we moved forward. And all I remember about that day in the hospital was the doctor saying count to zero from 100 by ones. I got to 99 and I woke up and my kidney was gone. <laughs> then I later found out my dad was doing okay. We had made it, we did it. Superman was okay. So then we moved into the recovery period. And see, this is what they don't tell you. See, I was down in Atlanta having a good time, a real good time. And being in the hospital wasn't my thing. Laying up in the bed, recovering. I wanted to get back to Atlanta in that good time. But I had to recover. And what the doctor told me, I asked him, I said, when can I go home? He said, you can go home where you can go. The hell that mean? <laughs> well, he meant, well, so what they don't tell you is your body shuts down after surgery like that. It's protecting itself. So it needed to be started again. So I had to go. So I was laying there bored, and then it really became depressed. And one of the nurses saw me, and she talked to me. She said, look, if you want to get out of here, you're going to have to get up and move. That's the only way your body's going to jumpstart again. And I was, had this IV hooked to my arm, and this machinery was on this rolling cart. And she showed me how to lean on it. And if I got up and walk, I could lean on it and move and get my body going. So I drug myself out of bed, walking down the hall in this little ugly gown, my butt sticking out, <laughs> still depressed. But one day I was walking and it was this, 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 this Latin, Hispanic figure was down the hall. He motioned for me to come talk to him. I mean, what else I got to do? <laughs> so I sat down. He says, mi amigo, you come talk to me. And he was so elated. He received a kidney himself. He said, we are so blessed to be here. He kept saying that over and over. My God, we are so blessed to be here. I just received a kidney. You have no idea I'm so grateful. We are so blessed to be here. And his words changed my mind. It changed my thinking. I was blessed to be here. If you're blessed to be, if you can give to somebody, you're blessed. And I was able to give to my dad. He gave me the right perspective. I had more time with my father. A relationship that wasn't the best, I had time to fix it. I had time to work on it. And he made me see that. So I thanked him and got up in with a little more pep in my step and started to make my rounds around the hospital, more walking. The next day I went to go look for my new friend and I went to the nurses and said, hey, and I described him what he looked like. There was no record of him ever being in that hospital. I know what I saw. So finally, I birthed that baby it's the best I got, ladies. It's the best I got. Number two. And it came. And so I could go home. And in the coming weeks, me and my dad talked more. We got closer. We were working on our relationship. And then in 2009, I decided to move to Detroit, Michigan. And in that same month, my mother went to the hospital and she never came home. But there was a silver lining. 
by being in Detroit, I could make that trip to Gary. It was a four hour trip. I could drive and I got to spend a lot of time with before she left and more time with my father. And then in 2010, I got the best gift I ever could have gotten. It was the birth of my daughter, AJ. She and my mother share the same birthday. <laughs> Baby girl, I know you're watching. Daddy loves you. I'll be with you soon. Then in 2013, I had this bright idea. We're going to go on a road trip. I hate driving. <laughs> but something propelled me to call my dad. So let's just let's go on a road trip. Let's spend some time together. He said, cool. We'll go get my daughter, AJ, she was in Georgia, and we'll just do it. It sounded like a great idea. <laughs> Can you imagine traveling with an aging old man and a three-year-old toddler? <laughs> my daughter kept wanting to stop, I'm tired, when are we gonna get there? And my dad kept, buying drinks, <laughs> and he was having problems with his, his prostate at the time, so he kept having to go to the bathroom. Man, we ain't never gonna get go where we supposed to go. And then he would buy a newspaper. We stopped in every town between Gary, Indiana, all the way to Georgia and Alabama, and he would buy a newspaper. He had problems with his sight. Like, you can't even read the things. What's wrong with you? I wanted to kill them both. <laughs> Leave them on the side of the road, somebody will find them, take care of them. Make no sense. But our trip finally found us to Alabama in my mother's gravesite. We wanted to visit it. And we made our way through the cemetery. And at first sight, my daughter saw it. And she got down on her knees and said, we need to clean this. It can't look like this. And me and my dad looked at each other. Something happened in that moment. And whatever problems we had was gone. My mother orchestrated this from the grave. She knew we needed to be here in that moment at that time. God, I love that woman. I didn't want to kill him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we made our way back home. I took everybody home. It was good. And in the coming weeks, I got to spend more time with my dad. I would go visit him often. Every weekend, I was back and forth between Detroit and, Get Detroit and Gary. And it was good. I would take him to the store, take him to run his errands, whatever he wanted to do. It was really good. And then one time I went to visit him in 2014. It's a little bit different. I came in the house. He says, I need to talk to you. He had this sense of urgency on his face, real intent. He said, I need you to hear me. I'm like, Dad, yeah, what's wrong? No, I need you to listen to me. I'm having problems remembering things. I need you to hear what I'm telling you. He was so intent, like, look through me. I need you to hear me. A few weeks later, he was diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's. The damn clock was ticking. I had more time, but it was running out. There's no cure for these. And in the coming weeks, I went to go visit him some more. My sister had moved home at that point to take care of him because his health was starting to fail even more. He needed full-time care. God bless her for doing that. She gave up her life and her time to make that happen. But the dementia and the Alzheimer's came fast to the point he started remembering less. And at some point, it was like talking to a stranger. He didn't know who I was when I come to visit him. And that was hard. The time we, I had bought was gone. And the last time we got together, I was talking to him. He was laying in the hospital bed. And they had to tie him down because he was wrestling with the nurses so much. He was fighting for his life, but he was out of his mind. He didn't know who anybody was. And that was hard. Superman was gone. He was just human. And this was almost the end for him. 
And so I would just go visit him, and I remember sitting at his bedside and just talking to him and just telling him what was going on with me. And I told him I was going to take my daughter to Disney World. She was turning five, and I was going to take her, something he would have never been able to do for us. And in that moment, my dad rose his head, and he looked at me and smiled. It was the last connection we ever had. But in that moment, he knew that his granddaughter was taken care of. She had her lion. She had me. And, my, and his memory would live on through our stories and the time that we spent together. I was blessed. Even to this day, my daughter has memories of her grandfather and that trip. She said, no, I didn't. She didn't know I wanted to kill her. Well, she knows now. <laughs> So on this coming Father's Day, if you still have your father or father figure, take the time. It's important. You can't get it back. Thank you. Love. Thank you. Jacob Walker. <laughs> 